Alrighty guys, well, welcome to the video. So today in this video, what I wanted to do is a more fully comprehensive and in-depth guide on how to actually um, modify some of the more restricted services in Windows and how to actually bypass some of the restrictions and make sure that the operating system is actually reporting correctly on some of the things that you're actually trying to um, tweak or manipulate or modify. And so what I mean by that is one of my most recent videos, a person commented and they basically pointed out that, hey, the priority class when you do the image file executable options registry tweak that we've shown in previous videos before, where you create a CPU priority class and an IO priority class within these specific two trees, essentially that will report itself in task manager and in the process lasso, but they basically pointed out that it's not actually reporting itself correctly. And the way that they were able to verify this is that if you go and type in this specific command, WMIC process list brief, it'll pull up all of the different processes and it will essentially give you the priority level of each one. And each priority level has a specific number attached to it. Well, we'll notice that we can see a priority level of 13. Well, if we go and pull up the Microsoft documentation on base priorities, we'll notice that base priority 13 for the actual command we just put in, 13 is only noticed in high priority class and it's a normal thread priority. But real time priority has no value below 16, even if it's on idle state. And so they basically pointed out that this is a way to actually double check or verify that actual services are being changed. And so I was wondering how do we essentially get past this, um, what appears to be an artificial limitation that essentially is preventing us from manipulating these services. Because if we look at these specific services all the way down to here, we'll notice that we can't change sp some specific things about each one specifically. So IO priority and memory priority for all of these is basically off the table. We can't actually change them, otherwise we'll get an error. And so if we try to change something like CPU sets on the system service, which is the NTOS kernel.exe, we won't actually be able to do that and it will give us an error all the same. And so essentially that's the main thing is that what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out how to essentially bypass that limitation. How do we unrestrict those services because they're protected? Well, there is a specific service that we can download called Windows D by CatLogic. And I'll link the description and the uh, links to it as well so you guys can download it for yourself. And it's called wind64.exe. And when we run that service, it essentially gives access to a bunch of different commands that we can enter that will decouple or essentially de-restrict a bunch of different services that we're trying to tweak. And so the way that we do that is we do wind64 slash D, and then we want to find the specific PID or process ID that we're trying to look for. So we'll want to do 740 and 852. So then we do 740 and then wind64 slash D. And then we do 844. And now you'll see that both of those processes, if we do them correctly here, let me just double check that we did it correctly. Wind64 slash D. Oh, sorry, if we did the wrong one. Wind64 slash D. And then we have 852 is actually the name of it you'll notice that both of the csrss.exe services now have IO priorities and memory priorities exposed to us. And we can actually change the affinities now for that as well. And so that's the first way that allows us to verify that we actually have the um, securities removed for that service. Now, if we download one more service called System Informer, what we can do is essentially, it's also sometimes called Process Hacker, but if we go into the um, options and let me go to enable kernel mode driver, what we can do is if we check this service and we go to priority and we set real time, and then we go into priority as well here and we set it for real time as well. Well, if we run that same command now, after changing those things that we wanted to, we go win 64 or uh, yeah, no, sorry. So we go WMIC list process list brief that'll pull up the same things and you'll notice that the actual priority level is actually now within the real-time priority class and it's 24. well if we go back to that documentation that we were just barely looking at we'll notice that an actual real-time priority class thread level of 24. and so that's how we can essentially verify 
that the actual service is in real time, not just artificially um, lying to us essentially. And so that is the main way to do that. Now, again, I want to preface this specifically. This is not something that I recommend doing because there are a lot of different things that are unknown about this. There could be potentially things that could change your operating system and might not actually be for the better. And so I don't recommend doing this if you are not somebody that is uh, fully aware of the risks and is fully prepared to potentially cause damage to their operating system or potentially cause a lot of uh, troubleshooting down the road. Fortunately, though, if you restart your system, all of the different modifications that we made, like unrestricting these services, will restart themselves back to default. So if you do encounter any issues, just restart your system and it should bring you back to normal operation. But this is just a fun way to do it and essentially it gives you the actual video guide and explanation on how to do this, not just essentially creating a web page or something that just has a bunch of documentation that can take a long time. And so no service now, if we run the same commands with the wind64-d or slash d, none of these services will be off limits if we try. Even something as um, restricted as the system service or the NTOS kernel.exe, which, which has the highest protections available to it, that one will not be off limits to us. So essentially, this is a um, this is essentially an all-encompassing solution for changing just about anything you could possibly want within the Windows operating system. And so, yeah, guys, like I said, it's very nuanced, it's very complex, and it's very in-depth. And if I'm being completely honest, I wouldn't recommend doing it, but the information is out there. If you would like to experiment with it, just know that there could be potentially risks involved and that going forward, if you do decide to do it, that you are aware of them and that you are willing to accept those potential problems that can come forth. But anyway, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully this is something that is you guys like this kind of entertainment or this kind of content. Most of the stuff that I do related to this kind of stuff is purely educational and a little bit entertainment, I guess. And so please like, subscribe, comment, leave any suggestions, leave any feedback, and have a good one, guys. My name's Savaterix, and I'm out.